Hey everyone, welcome to today's hopefully relaxing and super chilled drawing and painting session. I'm going to draw a few modern botanical pieces, so the main one will be the flower. The one I'm drawing now is the birth of paradise, I believe. It's a really beautiful flamboyant type of a flower and it has two complementary colors, the orange and the purple. So I really like the fire, fieriness of it and the, the vibrancy of the colors that are in the petals. It's a very unusual, very structured flower. It doesn't have any symmetry as usually flowers do have that so it just follows its own thing it doesn't it doesn't represent any other flower so I am actually very slow at drawing and I sped up the video a very very tiny little bit just to shorten the <laughs> um the length of it uh, but you can see it's almost like in real time you probably wouldn't even notice if i didn't tell you but yes i am quite slow when i'm drawing modern botanical art because i find when i slow down i have better control over my pen and i can achieve that clean precision and the lines that I need to achieve. The two colors that I will be using is the Daniel Smith Cobalt Blue Violet, which is actually quite an interesting and gorgeous color, and it can be used straight from the tube for this particular flower, but I will mix it up a little bit. The other color is Transparent Pyrrole Orange by Core. It is a super, super intense orange, very vibrant, and Core has this amazing quality to it where it basically pushes away every other color. It's their patent ingredient, the Aquazole, and it just loves to push other colors and pigments away, which you might see soon in the mixing tray. To mix up a few of the green tones, I'm going to use some of the colors from my Ultimate Color Palette. This is the half pen set. There is also a tube set available. By the way, I am in the process of shutting down my Etsy shop and whatever few stock items I have left, as soon as they sell out, I won't be putting anything new on there because I need to keep my stock to uh, to sell on my website and I am in the process of setting up my website and an online shop on the website so you can have everything in one spot including my online classes and my artwork so I'll create like a gallery for you to see everything in one uh, spot which I think will be a great representation of my um, work as an artist and uh, what kind of products I create and what's available. Um, I won't be going into the Etsy issue in this video. I have done a couple of videos that you can watch just before this one. I will be doing a separate update on that subject today. I just want you to enjoy nothing but luscious watercolors and beautiful botanical art. I always find it super, super relaxing. In fact, you may have noticed I have my studio lights on and the reason being is that I filmed this during an evening when I finally found time to sit down. This was during a very stressful time and art for me is another way of 
uh, relaxing my mind. I love cooking when I'm super super stressed. I just start cooking different dishes and it's my way of relaxing in the same way as painting. And both of these um, avenues help to get my mind off things. And so here you can see how super bright the transparent pyrrole orange is. It is literally the brightest orange I believe that I have. I think the oranges were the next color on the list to be swatched out as a color group. It's a series that I started last year and then it didn't get too many views so I kind of parked it up a little bit because I was trying to grow my channel and create other content but it is still something I will be doing uh, because I need to do it for my own um, swatch catalog that I'm creating of all of the watercolors that I have so I might as well take you on that journey and share it all with you but yes it's something that will still be done so you will see all my oranges and be able to compare them side by side of intensity but I'm pretty sure this is the brightest that I own so for this petal I am switching or rather switching <laughs> between two brushes one which is not big to begin with I think it's around four and then a tiny little one which is probably uh, I don't know I'm thinking a zero something let me actually double check I hope my microphone is still functioning as I will only learn <laughs> Once I listened back, it just had a quite a tumble. So anyways, the brushes. So the slightly bigger brush that I'm using is the Princeton Neptune. I have quite a few of different sizes. Love this brush. It's around size 4. And the teeny one is a Pro Art uh, brush and it's a 4-0. So it has a very short small tip and I can get into those really narrow parts of the petals. The essence of the color mixing here is that I'm trying to differentiate between every petal ever so slightly. So mixing in a little bit of uh, one of the colors from my palette, uh, as well as uh, a little bit of the purple to maybe mute things slightly down, but very, very little because the purple is also quite a strong color. And that will create a bit of sense, um, sense of dimension because some of those petals are sitting at the back and some of those petals are at the front or the foreground. And that's what I'm trying to achieve. I have mixed in quite a bit of my strawberry velvet into the orange because it has a granulating and pigment separating um, property to it something you won't see as well on this paper because it's a very smooth kind of thin paper um, so it's not designed for watercolors but when you use a thicker watercolor paper preferably 300 gsm cold press you will start seeing the granulation a lot stronger come through in your mixes so the granulation and the pigment separation still will happen uh, maybe less so but it will be um, visible in the mixes so not necessarily do you need to use the colors on their own as they come although they're beautiful but you can also use them as you're mixing colors and that's what i have done in this illustration i will also show you a beautiful granulating effect and pigment separating effect mixing greens with the colors from my palette so now let's go back to the orange as you can see adding slightly more of the orange bringing that vibrant fiery gorgeousness to the petals I'm trying to break down the smoothness of it and adding a little bit of texture as well you don't want it to be all solid color when you're working with watercolors you want there to be um, a lovely kind of breakdown 
uh, of the lighter and darker effects to create that watercolor effect. Going right behind the larger foreground petals, we have little peaks of the background petals coming through. What's important is to try to avoid touching the two so they don't blend because obviously, as I said before, I'm trying to add a little bit of variation in the tone. Some of them a bit darker, some of them a bit, a bit lighter. So if they touch each other and the color watercolor just flows in, it all becomes a bit of a mess and you won't be able to see that um, differentiation between foreground and background, which is what we're trying to achieve. The beauty about convenience colors such as this gorgeous cobalt blue violet is the fact that you can just use it out of the tube and you don't need to add anything to it. However, I find that there is always an element of adding a little bit of another color to it to make it your own. Um, Either way, it works well straight from the tube or toning it down slightly with the, the complementing orange color. So when the colors are separately sitting on the page in the same illustration like here, we have the purple and the orange, they bounce off each other and they pop. Um, that's basically simple color theory for you in a nutshell. However, if you then mix the same colors which are complementary in the color wheel, what happens is they neutralize each other. So if you have a purple that is too vibrant and vice versa, if you have an orange that is too much to handle, then you can add the purple to the orange or the other way around, orange to the purple and create a more kind of neutralized version of that color. So it helps to take the edge of that um, perhaps extreme brightness or vibrancy that you may not want in your illustration. But of course, it all depends what sort of color palette you're working with. It is now time to do a bit of glazing, which is pretty much waiting for the first layer of the green or any color that you do work with to dry and then add another mix of color on top. So here I have mixed up a number of colors, including the cobalt teal, and I believe it was also the gold green deep and perhaps the chartreuse as well. A deeper tone to the tone before and you can see there is definitely pigment separation going on. It is gorgeous. Love the texture, love the fun effect that you can bring with a pigment separating and granulating watercolor to your illustration without needing to do much else. So if you don't want to bust out your color pencils and you just want to keep it strictly water watercolor, I always advise to use granulating and pigment separating watercolors. So at this point, I really like the two large flower illustrations on the pages, both pages, but I felt that there was a lot of white space around them and I wanted to add smaller botanical illustrations around them to make it a more of a finished um, sketchbook spread, I suppose. And so what comes to mind is always just leaf illustrations. They're super simple to do, a little bit of drawing skills, not even that important. I believe that anyone can try and draw some simple leaves. So it isn't really about trying to perfect anything. With flowers, I feel that there is more detail and I slow down a lot more than I do with leaves. Leaves is something I can actually completely relax into. With flowers, I relaxed more 
after the drawing part so when I start adding the watercolors that's my relaxing uh, part but with leaves already with the drawing part I feel pretty chilled and I just get into the um, mind space of drawing different leaf fragments so at the bottom of the previous page there was a bit of a structural piece and then the rest will be just quite simple and some of them are inspired by so the first one was inspired by acacia and then the other one opposite it was more of a eucalyptus inspiration and the others just just leaves that i have been drawing for years and years and you can also find them in my ephemera set so for those who are interested my Etsy currently is Aliona Creates but I am moving to my own website which is alionacreates.com so that should be nice and simple and you should be able to find everything <laughs> in one place so I am now moving on to adding color to those foliage and leaf illustrations and at this point I love when it's something smaller I love switching gear and adding some markers and they are so simple to use I'll show you a couple of techniques that I like to use so first of all I start with one color and use it across the leaves jumping from one to another then I add another color and kind of sometimes overlay it and it could be just two colors it could be more colors and then I just add watercolor yeah, sorry water with the brush and it creates a watercolor effect and that's what I like it's just a different way of um, adding color which sometimes is easier and faster to do and it's perhaps easier to control than watercolor so if you're a beginner and you like watercolor effect try some watercolor markers these are tombos they're beautiful they have some fascinating <laughs> fabulous beautiful colors which are really bright and then they also have loads of pastel colors as well the other technique that I do is sometimes I add the colors as I said before then I go in with the water then I wait for everything to dry fully and then I see if I need to add a little bit more of a contrasting color as you will see with this particular illustration of the eucalyptus inspired foliage I felt that at the end it was just a little bit too uh, flat looking and it needed some more contrast coming in and that's what I will do after everything dries but you also have to keep in mind your paper so be careful doing this technique if you're drawing or painting on a thinner paper each time as you wiggle the bristles of the brush on the paper it kind of um, can disturb the fibers quicker and get the water saturating to the other side if you're only doing it once it's absolutely fine there's no bleed throughs and this is not a thick paper this is my royal talent sketchbook and it is 140 gsm i believe so different to the usual 300 uh, paper watercolor paper that i would use for botanical art but it's fun to play with here pencils look fantastic watercolor when it's not used in abundance and things like markers uh, preferably water soluble or pigment markers look also quite pretty so the um, the technique that I'm doing here is I'm starting with the darkest contrasting color and then I will add I believe two more colors to the leaves and I will blend them and layer them as I'm adding make sure if you're going in with a lighter color over a darker color that the nib will pull that 
color so you'll need to clean off your uh, nib or tip of the marker on a piece of paper it's a very quick uh, job to do but I highly advise you to do that because once it stains sometimes if you want that pure light color you will get it a bit dirtier by a darker color for your next illustration so keep that in mind and just keep your nibs clean or that's at least what I like doing I've seen people do all sorts of um, adventurous things like um, tipping or, or using the tip uh, with water and just uh, introduce them <laughs> kind of kiss them tip to tip and use a more mixed color I'm not into that as much I would probably if I wanted to mix a color I would use like a peel off palette or a tear off palette they're called and just do it on there and then you know not contaminating the tips too much so um, we are pretty much at the end of the illustration I'm going to add a little bit more water and everything blends beautifully sometimes if I want to have a bit more of a hard edge I play with that and I use that to the uh, to my advantage things like hard edges just as pigment separating and granulating watercolors are great tools to add extra bit of pizzazz to your illustration it gives you character it gives you a fun element and no longer is it a flat uh, layer of color it becomes interesting and I think this is when illustrations pop off the page when there is enough contrast when there is something happening when there is a lot of kind of vividness and brightness and vibrancy so here I'm going back as I explained before adding a little bit of a darker color just at the tip of the leaves and blending them in with water for that extra bit of contrast I hope you enjoy this fun two pages of illustrating botanical art and i will see you soon thanks for watching